Now the front of your airplane fell off. <laughs> This is my first time at Dawn Patrol. Wanted to come for years, but you know, um, since 2018 and COVID, there hasn't been a Dawn Patrol. So this is my first opportunity to, to make it here. We're from Long Island, New York, probably about 50 miles from the city. Oh, you got there, show me who that is. And if they Igor are. Sikorsky. This is a one-sixth scale, Igor Sikorsky designed Ilya Muramets. It represents the first four-engine bomber in the world. It just hangs out up here. Igor designed the first four-engine aircraft in the world long before any of the Western nations uh, flew a four-engine airplane. And what he wanted to do was he wanted to create these airliners, civil aviation, to take people through rural Russia. And in 1913, he took 16 passengers in a heated salon in a similar aircraft with electric lights from an airborne generator, windborne generator, heat from one of the nearby engines, and comfortable wicker furniture. And it also had the first airborne toilet in the world. Don't ask me to describe it. I don't have any information. Nice today. They built around 75 of them during the war. Only one was shot down by the Germans. It was attacked by four Albatross fighters. The machine gunners in the Muramets shot down three of them before it went down. And it's an aircraft I've, I've, I've known about for many years and wanted to build, but for obvious reasons, people would shy away from it because um, there's really nothing forward of the leading edge. So the first question I get from everyone is, how do you balance it? I received a document from a friend in Russia that shows that the center of gravity is towards the trailing edge of the wing. So if Igor flew his, I'm, I, I could fly mine. And as you can see, it's extremely stable in low wing conditions. Wow. Yeah, uh, no pressure on you at all. You had everybody watching you. What was that like flying? It, it, was, um, it was amazing. The airplane is extremely re responsive. It, it turns great with the three rudders. The ailerons are very effective. It's almost like a trainer. Anyone could fly it, really, anyone. Nimble. <laughs> Here we go, gentlemen. but I just love the history behind these models. Igor was a great aircraft designer. He actually had three separate careers. He had uh, four engine aircraft in Imperial Russia. He emigrated to the United States. He built aircraft here on Long Island. Actually, he built the first Pan Am Clippers that paved the South American routes. And then of course, everyone knows the Sikorsky Helicopter Corporation. It still bears his name in Stratford, Connecticut. So um, the man had three separate careers in aviation. What a great guy. I built it over one winter. And while it looks really complex, it's not. The fuselage is a box. The wings, they're around 200 ribs. I designed a rib. A friend cut out 200 laser cut ribs of different different sizes. Balsa, light ply, aircraft grade ply, depending upon where I needed strength. The leading edge and the spars are carbon fiber tubes. And the wings just went together in sections with joiners. It wasn't, it wasn't difficult. The most difficult part was repetition. If you made one strut, you had to make 32 struts, the same. Uh, I made all the strut connections. Um, I cut them out of sheet steel 
and I just sat there and bent them all into shape and drilled holes in them and you know after a few days you had them all done. So it's a lot of repetition. The only thing that wasn't repetition was the glass work in the front. I had to make a plug and then a friend of mine, Nick Zeroli, um, pulled a couple of shots for it, a clear, pla clear plastic shot ABS and a, um, uh, another ABS that I could make a frame. Well, you guys saw it, it flies. Yes, it flies. You <laughs> um, the engines, they, they're, um, they represent um, British Sunbeam Crusader V8s. Sikorsky originally designed this airplane. He flew it on German Argus inline six cylinder engines. When the war started, they weren't getting any more engines from Germany. So England sold them 50 of these V8s, which they didn't really care for. But that's the, the, the uh, model that I uh, decided to, to do. And the V8 engines, I'd make one part, like one head, and uh, put all the detail into it. And then I, I um, set it in a uh, silicone mold and then I pour and make eight resin heads. So that's what I did. I'd make one part on each, on each engine and then resin cast the rest. And there you go. That's amazing. And all the wires hold weight. You got little turnbuckles. Tell me about those. There must be, there are over 200 turnbuckles. And um, yes, they're all, they're all wired. They're all safety wired too. Um, but when I assemble the aircraft, the eight foot panels come off each side of the fuselage. So I'm only transporting three pieces in my van. I was in the Air Force from 75 to 80, and I actually got involved with RC after the Air Force. Um, I was hired by the State Department. They, they uh, sent me to uh, their communications school, and I ended up working at embassies and consulates all around the world. But during my training, I picked up uh, a hobby, RC, and it's been with me for over 40 years. I flew in West Africa, I flew in the Philippines, in Malaysia, and um, it's just a wonderful hobby. It looks great. Perfect. Yeah, and it flew nice too, right? Oh yeah, it's really stable. Yeah. It's low wind. Yeah. So happy you both are here. This is awesome. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. We're happy to be here. My wife is very independent. I have my hobbies, She's, she has her hobbies. But um, she, she likes traveling, and she, she wanted to come to the show with me this year. So uh, she's very supportive. I'm very fortunate. 